I'm pretty confident that most of you will agree with me that originality is something that can make a story, that can make a work of art a good thing. If someone were to ask me, what are the five things that make a work of that can make a work of art great? I think originality would be the first thing I would think of. And yet at the same time, originality, this is something I've noticed people look at it indirectly. This is one of those topics that people in their minds kind of sidle up to and they they never look directly at it and grab it and shake it and twist it and try to open it and try to take it apart. So what is it about originality and original works of fiction and original works of art that make us not want to face it directly? My most memorable experiences of a work of fiction is when I'm flabbergasted by its originality. I've never seen it before. I've never known people to think the kinds of thoughts in this story. It seems totally out of the blue and yet I find myself asking why hasn't this kind of story been made before? It's so... it speaks to the way things are in, in this day and age. I have one idea why we have this dilemma between original artwork and artwork. The absolute opposite would be plagiarism, where you're copying word for word or just making a copy of someone else's art and calling it yours and everything in between where you have artists who have been influenced by someone. Van Gogh was influenced by Gauguin, influenced by the Impressionist. So what is it if, if originality really is that beautiful, rare, truly sublime moment why, why do we sidle around it the way we do? Also, an obvious question that arises is if people want to be truly original artists, why don't they just not copy? Bear with me here, this takes a little explaining. Now, the existence of consciousness is still one of those great mysteries. Science doesn't understand what it is. In our age, we have people who are actually trying to reverse engineer the brain and artificial intelligence. And the mind is often to re referred to as being a system of data processing. So they describe consciousness as a state when of knowledge knowing itself, of self-awareness. So instead of, imagine that you have a document on the computer and yet this document knows itself. So resonance. Now if you have an acoustical instrument, what res the reason they have that hollow body on an acoustical acoustical instrument is to create resonance. So you can make a sound lay it louder. You can amplify it when you have it bounce back and forth and build upon itself. So when you when you strike a string on an acoustical instrument, the sound resonates. It, it bounces back and forth in that hollow body and reinforces itself and becomes louder and louder. And, and there is a theory of consciousness that consciousness arises through resonance of data. If you've ever spent a period of your life blogging or keeping a journal, you experience this wonderful sensation of a heightening of consciousness because you become more aware. You don't just live your life, but you live your life reflected. You reflect upon your life and it creates this resonance. It creates a heightened experience of your life. So if you go through a normal day and at the end of the day you write about it, you are 
reliving. You are copying that day. You are taking information and reproducing it on the page. And it is a reflection. It is not the original, it is a reflection, but it is in that process of reflecting that you have a heightened experience of your day. You are more alive to it. You are more aware of it. So this theory of the origin of consciousness isn't just saying that it's a good idea to copy and repeat and reflect information that has already been stated or made, but it is this resonance that actually gives rise to awareness, to being awake and experiencing life instead of being this information that doesn't really know itself or doesn't really experience anything. So copying, reflecting, reproducing input is actually one of the most fundamental modes to being creative or any kind of thinking process. You can actually prosecute someone in court. You can penalize them for plagiaring. That's, that's on one extreme, where if someone copies someone else's work of art too accurately and calls it their own. And yet at the same time, you have artists that are considered some of the most original artists ever, and yet we talk about them being influenced, who they are influenced by. In other words, how they are taking bits and pieces of these, these other works and, and, and imitating them. To say original art, good art, copycat art, bad art is a gross oversimplification, totally missing the mark. Just as one example, I, how about satire? You know, the movie A Haunted House, it satirizes the most popular films that came out around that time, and so it is such a blatant form of copying, and yet it's a form of copying where it's making fun of the movies it is imitating. Now there's something else going on here that I think makes a big difference. It is that human experience is very limited. You have what is actually going on in reality and then you have this very distilled, the, these very distilled human experiences that operate within what is called the collective unconscious. That is, as social animals, our, our experiences are shaped by the experience of those around us, and we resonate back and forth similar ideas, think similar things, have similar attitudes, and more or less have very predictable experiences. And this isn't something, oh, it's such a shame that humans follow the collective. Oh, we're so dumb to be that way. This, this is just the way it is. Collective unconsciousness, this is, this is the way our, our brains work. And it has to do with the great mystery. There, for the kinds of experiences we're having, I'm an optimist about this. I think that, that let's just say that it's 1% one, 1 of the kinds of experiences we could be having, of the kind of revelations we could be having, of the kind of new discoveries we could be making, of the kind of magical things going on around us at this very moment that we are not aware of because we are social animals thinking within the framework of collective unconsciousness. I think truly original, new ideas do find their way into artwork. I think there is artwork that you, can be said to be original. I think that, that there are new, there is new insight and there are revelations and there are things experienced through the making of artwork that have never been seen before, never heard of, total surprises. 
and most of the time they get all mixed in with all this resonated thinking. But because this is the way we think, when we go to be creative, the very first thing that we do is look at something and imitate it. This is step one in getting creative. Now, a while back I heard something. It was this idea. Now, you know the idea of garbage in, garbage out. That's something that originated out of computers, that if you put garbage into a computer, you're not going to get anything out of it but, but garbage. Data that doesn't work, false data, that sort of thing. But with humans, what happens is garbage in, poetry out. Okay, so we have this thing where if you want to get creative, the very first thing you do is look at something outside of yourself and get influenced by it, get inspired by it, copy it, imitate it, satirize it. But the magical element here is that humans are very bad copiers. We are very inaccurate copiers and we usually transmute, distort, stretch, exaggerate anything that we try to reproduce accurately. The reason we're doing this is not because we're faulty machines, it's because in this environment of resonance there's all this feedback, there's a multitude of information swimming around in there, all bouncing off of other information, and so when we take in new information and try to faithfully reproduce it, given enough time in that resonance, it's going to get greatly distorted by all the other information resonating in there, stretching it, magnifying it, shrinking it, taking it apart and adding new pieces and, and injecting it with emotion and the urgency to survive and jealousy and rage and empathy and it, it, whatever ends up on that page, given enough, given enough resonance, is going to be a brand new creature never seen before. So one of my earliest experiences of art and art critique is, don't be a copycat. You're a copycat. Oh, that's wrong. Don't be a copycat. But back in my mind, somewhere back in my mind, unconsciously, I was thinking, well, that's what you do. If you make art, you, you, you look at something and, and, and you're like a, you know, I wasn't thinking this, but I'm thinking it now. You're like a journalist. You're like an explorer. You want to take in information and somehow re-represent it. You know, for me, when I, when I go to make one of these videos for you, very often, I haven't even thought some of the thoughts that I find myself saying in the video. So what I'm saying here is that artistic revelation and eureka and great artistic discovery for the artist, the, it's the artist's conscious job to be somewhat passive, just be faithful to making art and trust that in that process that is when these new insights will find their ways into what we're making. I'll give you my most recent example. I'm, I'm working on, in a work of fiction, it's an institution that is sim looks on the surface like a law firm, but it's really about these mind visitors in my fictional world. And so I did a Google search of lawyer signs, an image search to, to get an idea of what are common, you know, if someone's going to make a sign to put outside of a lawyer's office, what is that sign gonna, going to look like? And I got the page. A lot of different signs. Now, I, have, I had a choice. I could, I could actually take one of those signs and be photorealistically accurate about reproducing a sign. I could 
change the words on it instead of it saying lawyer it could say uh, cognitive investigations whatever but uh, here's what I did do I looked at that I did the Google search I, I looked at one of the signs then I turned away from the website and looking at a piece of paper I drew not just one but a couple of attempts of copying that sign and what I'm doing is I'm removing myself from the source because as a as a human I'm a very bad copier I'm, I'm you know humans are you know if 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 a computer is like a mirror, then it would look like a mirror. If a human is a mirror, then it would look like a funny house mirror. It would be all misshapen and wavy and distorted. So I'm capitalizing on my bad copy skills by removing myself from the source. When I, when I go to start drawing that sign, I, I only have a vague, you know, I know, I know the general way the sign looks but there are lots of parts of it that that I, I can't accurately remember so what happens my creative side the creative powers step in and they will fill those details in for me think about the last vivid dream you had think about how amazingly detailed it was how how the details were overwhelming. There were more details in that dream than you would see in real life. So our subconscious mind is amazing at, at creating, coming up with things. And so it becomes kind of like two influences. You have the, the information from the real world, but if you're taken away from it and are still trying to reproduce it, that information from the dream world is going to step it in step in and fill that in for you it's going to come up with all these details and the magical thing is is that a lot of those details are going to be completely original the first time I was introduced to abstract art it was described to me as this abstract art is a step away it's indirect it's when it's abstract it means that it's taken back from the source and in that way it becomes something new. Here's a great meditation for artists. This is a walking meditation. You can do this anytime in your day and that's when you become aware of the resonating. There's the world outside of you. What's going on in your mind? What, what kind of, of reproducing of, of your experience is bouncing around in there? So we don't have to sweat it. We don't have to f fight hard to become more original. We just have to give ourselves the room to be bad copiers. All that power of imaginative creativity is, is we, we experience it every time we remember a dream. It's all waiting there and it just needs places to land and we, we offer it places to land when we try to reproduce, imitate, re-represent something when we don't allow ourselves to continually look directly at that thing we are trying to reflect. See, you have a subconscious that has truckloads of original material that it wants to give to you. You, you have that next great novel somewhere in the subconscious mind. So it isn't, this, it isn't about learning to work harder at becoming a better artist. It's a matter of coming up with ways of working slightly differently in such a way that you're allowing more and more input from your subconscious. When the conscious mind comes up with new ways of helping the subconscious to help you with your artwork, the conscious, what the conscious mind experiences is an awakening of 
all kinds of new perceptive powers, of, of new insights in new insights about the world around you. See, that bad copying that we humans do to such an, ex an extraordinary amount is there for a reason. In that bad copying is our, our true cognitive powers. So I hope that was helpful. If this gives you any ideas, please leave it in a comment so that others who watch this video can get even more insight about this topic. If you like my videos and want to get me back, please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, tell a friend. You can tweet one of my videos or Google Plus it. Please take the time to go check out my illustrated story in episode forms at solomation.com. The name of the story is Terrible Immunity. I love the idea that all of you are out there creating new works and coming up with original stories. I hope your writing and artistic endeavors go well this week and have a good day.